the Primarch beat his wings with his back to the enemy. He faced the defenders upon the wall, pinions keeping him aloft as the dawn's pathetic light did its best to spark flares at the edges of his golden armor. Hololithic incarnations of his hovering form flickered into life across Vambrace consoles and viewscreens in the keep. They sprang up from handheld projectors, thousands of identical tiny blue light ghosts with beating wings. The words of Sanguinius carried across kilometers of elevated wall, brought to distant ears on the clicking, ticking, crackling speakers of servo skulls and Mechanicus drones. Soldiers clustered around their data slates to bear witness to the Primarch's proclamation. The hundred thousand defenders of the Delphic battlement, drawn from all across the burning Imperium, listened to the words of the great angel. All of them could see him, even if they were far away from sight and forced to rely on a hololithic reflection. All of them could hear him, even if his words purred through the crackling mouth of a floating probe. Land had expected a speech dripping with demagogic inspiration. He'd find it tawdry, but knew most of the human defenders, many of whom responded far more positively to the Primarchs than the Mechanicus did, would find great value in such a display. But that was not what he, nor any of them, would receive. I do not want to be here, Sanguinius told them. I do not want this present and I want a future that follows even less. We stand against our own brothers and sisters, with our backs to the Eternity Gate, and this is not a battle we can win. If you have ever wondered how you will die, now you know. If you have ever wondered where your body will lie, now you know. You will be killed on the last wall between hope and horror. Your body will be here, unburied, staring up at a poison sky. Once the sanctum falls, Terra falls with it. And I tell you, we cannot hold this wall. You can see it yourselves. They are too many. We are too few. We may last a week, if we do the impossible. More likely, we will be dead in three days. Perhaps my words surprise you, or frighten you. But I will not lie. Not to you. Not to you who have come through two hundred days of dread only to find yourselves here. I have looked into your faces and seen what this war has cost you all. I have followed the flow of battles that each of you have survived to stand here on this final battlement. I see everything you have endured, those stories written in the light of your eyes. Now the War Master offers you the lie of life, promising a mercy that his forces are incapable of showing, if we will abandon this last wall. And it falls to me, here and now, to tell you to stand against him one more time. To give all you have, even your lives, if it will hold this rampart for another day, another hour, another second. That is what the moment demands of me, is it not? That I beg you to make one last sacrifice? Sanguinius swooped closer to the battlement, casting his sword to the stone. It clattered there, in a loose cluster of blood angels, none of whom made any attempt to pick it up. Land stared at it a long moment, then watched as the Primarch whirled in the sky to face the wall once more, showing his bare hands to the gathered thousands. No! Sanguinius fairly breathed the word. His wings beat hard, holding him aloft. He stared into the silence that met his disavowal, and he shook his head to punctuate the syllable with adamance. No, I will not ask that of you. You have already given everything. You have already done all that was asked of you a hundred times over and more. You have suffered through a war of unimaginable darkness, one that has demanded more from you than any soldier in the history of our species has been forced to give. The fact that you still live, that you still fight, I cannot conceive of the courage and resilience it requires for you to face this dawn and look to the horizon with a rifle in your hands. Land could hear the shuffling of army soldiers. He saw them glancing at each other. None of them spoke. All of them were held wrapped by the Primarch's words. Where Horus has offered you only lies, I will offer you truth. Those of you that wish to run, run. Leave this place. Not in shame at a duty undone, not in surrender to the traitor forces, 
but with honor. Go with my gratitude, for you have already given all that was asked of you. What right do I, does anyone, have to demand any more? From you, who have endured harrowing beyond account, horror beyond measure. If you wish to fall back into the Sanctum Imperialis and spend the last hours of your life with your children, then do so. Know that you go not only with my blessing, but with my envy. If you wish to leave the wall and take your chances in the wasteland before the battle begins, then, in the Emperor's name, you have earned the right to try. Go swiftly, and carry with you the pride that you have already given a hero's share in a war that none of us wanted and were forced to fight anyway. And if you wish for the truth, I will give it to you gladly, for you have earned that too. It shames me to admit, but I would abandon this wall if I could. The Primarch in me, the supposed demigod half of my heart, craves life with a ferocity that shames me. If I bowed to that instinct, I would have taken to the sky and never looked back. But I cannot. I am half-human, and the human in me demands that I stay. Sanguinius turned, looking over the shoulder at the retreating emissary, daughter of Torment. It was a quarter of the way to her lines now. When he looked at the wall once again, all could see the resolve in his eyes. There are legends about me. I hear them whispered among you every day, that I know the moment of my own death. The stories say, this gives me courage, that I feel no fear because I know I cannot yet be slain. Here is the truth of that tale. That prophesied death is coming, today, tonight, tomorrow. I know not the when or the how, only that I feel fate's breath on the back of my neck. I do not remain here out of immortality's courage. I remain here because, if I am to die, I choose this death. I choose to die with my back to the last door. I choose to give my life to buy another hour, or a minute, or even a single second of grace to those who cannot be here fighting with me. I choose to die here because I do not believe I have yet given all that I can. Someone must stand and fight, and if I have but one choice left, I will make it now. I will stand. I will fight. I will hold this wall, knowing that the 13th Legion makes for Terra with all speed. And if they cannot bring salvation, they will bring retribution. Whether I am alone, or whether a hundred thousand of you are with me by my side, when the Warmaster's horde descends upon this wall, they will find me waiting for them with a blade in hand. Not because I can win, but because it is right. I do not know what delusion grips those out there, who were once our brothers and sisters, but I know it is right to oppose them. Silence drifted over the Delphic battlement, but only for a moment. Sanguinius swept his arm across the wall, taking in the defenders. Thousands of the hollow ghosts of his image did the very same thing. I have spoken enough. You need hear no more of my fears and confessions. All that remains is for me to ask. Will you run? At first, in the face of the great angel's honesty, there was no answer. Corporal Magir of the 91st Hindustani drop troops didn't know what to say. Reason and duty warred within him, in a way known to any soldier facing the grimmest of odds. He could live, he could leave and live. His regiment wasn't made for this kind of fighting anyway. They were guerrillas, drop troops, trained for point insertion. He'd been on the ground for this entire damn war. What use was a graph trooper on a rampart? What use was high atmosphere jump training when all he had now was a las rifle and a bayonet? But he was only making excuses, justifying, and he knew that. He had the training and experience to overcome these doubts, to push them back and summon focus in their stead. Besides, there was nowhere to run. Not really. Tactically, it made sense to hold here. If he was going to die, best he sell his life where it mattered the most. No, he called to the Primarch. And he wasn't the first, but he was one of them. His voice cut out of the silence in the very first wave of denials. He would not leave the wall. He would not run.